Hey, happy Friday. This week, the cheapest foldable smartphone that I've ever seen got launched. Intel said that they're going to start manufacturing chips for Microsoft. That's kind of a weird sentence if you think about it. And Nvidia is apparently still on top of the world. Welcome to the Friday Checkout. This video was sponsored by Nebula. This week, we start the brief with Apple introducing a new form of encryption for iMessage called PQ3 that should future-proof message encryption against quantum computers. The idea here is that even though a hacker today probably can't decrypt any encrypted messages, they could theoretically store them, wait until the quantum computing revolution happens and we have crazy amounts of computing power, and then decrypt them later. And this new encryption tech is supposed to prevent that. That is great, and it's also something that Signal did about five months ago. So your secrets are hopefully secure even in a quantum computing-powered future. And speaking of my personal favorite messaging app, Signal has just introduced usernames that people can find you by, so you no longer have to share your phone number just to chat with people. That is great for anonymity. Next, good guy Samsung is rolling out One UI 6.1 to older S23 phones and more in late March, which adds the Galaxy S24's Galaxy AI features, like Circle to Search, to older models as well. And beside that, Samsung is also upgrading a bunch of audio capabilities on its phones, tablets, and earbuds, adding AuraCast support to most of its latest devices, plus 360 audio on TVs for Galaxy Buds, and also real-time translation between Galaxy S24 phones and Galaxy Buds. It's still kind of wild to me how Samsung went from being the worst at updates to being one of the best. And talking of updates, Fairphone interestingly just gave its three-year-old Fairphone 4 a really significant camera update, completely overhauling low-light shots, adding better color performance, adding AI scene detection, etc. They sent me two devices to test the difference, and it's nice and definitely in line with the idea of having a phone that stays relevant for long. Next, the sustainable laptop company Framework announced that it is selling a cheap but still modular laptop as the $499 13-inch bare-bones model, thanks to what they call B-Stock Factory Seconds. You get an older 11th gen Intel CPU and also refurbished RAM, and I guess this is a really cool option for less demanding but still repairable use cases. And then this week we also heard that Asus could be abandoning its compact phone form factor, with the Zenfone 11 Ultra launching next month as a definitely not compact phone. It is unclear whether we'll ever get a compact phone from the company again, but I bet that the small phone enthusiasts are getting increasingly nervous. Moving on, Google launched the first Android 15 developer preview for Pixel phones late last week, and as usual, the first update has very few user-facing changes. There's more privacy and security options, some camera controls, and minor performance improvements, etc. And finally for the brief, I saw an announcement from Sony yesterday, and I kept thinking that, hey, that looks kind of familiar. It's a transmitter that connects to a high-end camera and then transmits its videos or photos using 5G to something like an FTP server or even a live broadcast. Makes sense. But then I realized it's almost certainly just a Sony Xperia Pro in a new case. Remember this phone from like three years ago? They had the exact same pitch for that, but now they turned it into a more dedicated product. Kind of fun. Okay, for my first story of the week, I think the era of truly affordable, foldable phones is finally here, with two different discoveries that I made this week. The first thing is a new phone called the ZTE Libero Flip that just launched in Japan. For now, you can only buy it over there, but it costs only $265 if you switch to the carrier that is selling it, or the full price is only about $420. Those are by far the most aggressive foldable prices that I've seen so far, and the phone itself looks pretty nice too and has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 7 Gen 1, 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. So as you would expect, kind of underwhelming mid-range specs. But then I remembered that, hey, we had a supposedly affordable foldable phone back here in the West as well. So I looked that up and here's what I found. The Moto Razr, which is the cheaper foldable of the company, is now also down $200 from its launch price to just $500 on Amazon, and this has basically identical specs to the ZTE 2. These two are definitely not the most exciting phones in the world, but they do prove the point that I've been trying to make since forever, which is that the foldable tech itself isn't actually all that hard or expensive to make. So foldable phones should get pretty much down to the same kind of price level as regular phones pretty soon, I hope. 
Okay, for my second story of the week, Nvidia announced just the most staggering numbers that I've heard in a while. The company earned over $22 billion in revenue, which was up 265% from last year overall. And their revenue from data centers, which also includes its AI chips, was actually up 400%. That is simply ridiculous. It's incomparable to the revenue growth rates of any other large company out there. And the company actually says that this kind of growth should continue. Nvidia is expected to launch their beastly new B100 AI chip later this year to keep the momentum going. And the company is basically single-handedly lifting the entire stock market and has become the fourth most valuable company in the world ahead of giants like Amazon and Google. The AI hype does not seem to be slowing down anytime soon, but competition for Nvidia does seem to be on the horizon. A company called Grok with a Q, which is unrelated to Elon Musk's Grok with a K, says that using souped up graphics cards for AI like Nvidia does is not the future at all, and instead so-called dedicated LPUs, purpose-built for AI, will win. They have a demo that you can try yourself at grok.com that spits out answers insanely fast, about 10 times faster than OpenAI's solution, for example. And what this does is running open source Llama models on the aforementioned Grok LPUs. Deciding who's going to win this race is way above my pay grade, but apparently Microsoft and Intel want in on the fun as well. And that's going to be my third story of the week. So Intel held an event called Direct Connect this week, which was its first big conference for its foundry business, the part of Intel that wants to make chips for just about anyone. CEO Pat Gelsinger said that, quote, I want to manufacture every AI chip, which I guess every chip foundry CEO would like. But then he also confirmed that Intel Foundry was apparently on track to meet almost all of its really ambitious goals to catching up with TSMC by next year. Oh, and it also already had orders for $15 billion from various customers. Only time will tell, but I guess maybe Intel will become a successful foundry at some point. And the biggest surprise this week actually came from Microsoft. Intel announced that they struck a deal to make new and secret chips designed by Microsoft and for Microsoft. Many people speculated that this might be the Cobalt and Maya chips that Microsoft recently announced for their data centers to compete with Nvidia and also weirdly enough with Intel. But given that the chips should be built using Intel's 18A process, which isn't ready for for I guess at least another year or something like that, my assumption is that it will be some future chips that haven't been announced yet. It's probably not gonna be a cool chip that you and I can get excited about in our laptops. Instead, it's probably gonna be some data center boring thing, but still, Wintel is back, I guess, just in a very different form factor now. Oh, and easily the most hilarious moment at this event was this truly bizarre moment that I want you to watch. <laughs> This is definitely the weirdest thing that I've seen since Elon hired a dude to dance in a robot suit. Also, the background was clearly AI generated and you can totally see some random things that just make no sense at all, like the legs of people moving in really unnatural ways. Kind of weird. Okay, that's it for the news. And uh, talking of AI, I don't know about you, but I'm starting to get really annoyed with all the AI chum that is flooding my internet. The other day, a relative of mine unironically sent me this video about languages, except all the images are AI generated and none of the characters that they actually describe in the video exist or make any sense. And clearly the whole video was just some lazy content farm spam. I'm not inherently against using AI as a tool, but it's starting to make the generation of junk content so easy that the junk is starting to crowd out the real content from real people. And if that annoys you as much as it annoys me, then maybe check out Nebula. Nebula is our very own video streaming platform and it only features the internet's best and most genuine educational content creators like Real Engineering, Wendover, Breaking Taps, Integza, yours truly, and many, many more. If you like to get lost in smart and thoughtful videos created with genuine care, this is the platform for that without the fear of accidentally clicking on some crap. It doesn't just feature all of our regular videos, but also whole dedicated Nebula original series, bonus content, behind the scenes, Nebula classes, and more, all without ads and sponsor reads, and often even early access. I myself have already made over 20 videos plus a whole class for Nebula, and many more are on the way. Also, some of my favorite video essays on the whole internet, like the Red Atom series that goes over the Soviet nuclear program, are exclusive to Nebula. Getting Nebula helps you clean up your media diet and it helps us create more and better content for you. It's a really clean trade. 
And it's also really affordable. With my link in the description, you can sign up for just $30 a year. And mind you, that is for a full year, not a month. So check it out. Be sure to use my link in the description for the discount. And I'll see you next Friday.